This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Yes, and welcome to Shepherd's Grove. The moment you walked through those doors, you became part of this church family. The moment you tuned in with us, you became part of this church family. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I have been rereading some of Grandpa Schuler's um, old quotes, and there was just this one that stuck out to me so much and rings so true. He says, goals are not only absolutely necessary to motivate us, they are essential to really keeping us alive. Hmm. Do not stop dreaming. Do not stop setting goals. Would you turn around and shake the hand of the person next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. Hey, today's going to be a great day. You picked a great day to come to church. And by the way, today's Bluegrass Sunday. So uh, we're going to have some, we don't normally have bluegrass in the church, but we're going to have it today, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Is that okay, guys? Yeah. All right. Is that okay with everybody? Oh, yeah. So we're going to have fun with it. And I believe you're going to leave here energized, renewed, and restored. So Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father. That in our wounds, in our hurts, Lord, you bring healing, blessing, favor, hope, vision we receive today by faith. We thank you, God, that you are here. You're making yourself available. We love you. And we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. In preparation for Bobby's message this morning, the words of our Lord found in Matthew. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. 
we are striving to be people of truth, for we know the truth sets us free. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands hath made, I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed. And sings my soul. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and take me home my God how great thou art and sing Thank you, Kirk Wall of the Prairie Ducks. You guys play in church a lot? <laughs> no, not. Starting now. Starting, Starting now, now, yeah. Starting... <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you, guys. Well, good morning. Hi, friends. Here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we're passionate about sharing God's love and dignity with the people in our community, both here in Orange County and throughout the world. And we consider you a valuable part of that community. Today, I hope you'll consider joining our mailing list so we can better encourage and connect with you. We love you, and we're rooting for you. To join our mailing list, please call, write, or go online today. To thank you for joining, we'll send a special bookmark featuring the Creed of the Beloved. We hope it reminds you of how much we love and appreciate having you as part of our community. Please call, write, or go online today. At Shepherd's Grove, an hour of power with Bobby Schuler. We believe that every person deserves dignity because every person is loved by God. We also believe that when people feel God's love personally, they are compelled to live as happy and whole students of Jesus. Your generous support is essential to our ministry and ensures we continue to share the life-changing message of God's love with the world. Today, we ask that you prayerfully consider partnering with us as we do ministry together. By becoming a Sparrow Partner, your contribution of $20 a month or one-time gift of $240 will help us continue to bring the message of God's love to a hurting world. As a thank you, we will send you this Sparrow Accent Lamp, perfect for a desk or a side table. We hope it reminds you of how much we appreciate you and rely on your partnership. In addition, we'll include this inspirational postcard from Pastor Bobby who in his own words talks of the sparrow and how it's been a symbol of hope and faith in this ministry's history. Your steadfast support enables Hour of Power with Bobby Schuler to maintain and extend its reach around the world. Call, write, or go online to become a sparrow partner today. Thank you, and remember always, God loves you, and so do we.
And now, let's return to the service. Well, with us today is Sarah Jakes Roberts, the co-pastor of One Church LA. She pastors that church with her husband, Tori, and she's a strong voice for the triumph people can have through their pain and their past mistakes. Her story is one of victory and joy through difficult circumstances. Would you please welcome with me Pastor Sarah? Hi, so nice to see you. So you have this great book that's coming out in a couple of weeks called Don't Settle for Safe. And in it, you're really talking to people about how to live vulnerably and how to be honest about the difficult things they've gone through. And I think a lot of people are like, well, what does she know? She's T.D. Jake's daughter. She's, so you're a PK like me. I am. And you've been through a lot in your life, actually, haven't you? I have, you know, growing up as a PK, there's an expectation, which there's expectations for all of us. I just believe as a preacher's kid, the expectation yes. can be a little bit more <laughs> in depth. And so, yes, I was raised as T.D. Jake's daughter. I found myself searching for validation and approval from other people. I got pregnant at the age of 13, had my child at 14 years old. I got married as a teenager and then, you know, divorced. And I know that's a lot to say in such a short period of time, but I really learned that when there is an expectation and a failure to meet that expectation, there's a shame associated with that. And because of that shame, I learned to separate myself from my truth. And what I'm helping people do in Don't Settle for Safe is to take ownership of their truth, not to be proud that we've gone through things, but to recognize that our storms, our issues, there are servants. And in the depths of our despairs, there are lessons for us to be learned from what we've gone through. And so you really offer such a great, um, just a great guide to someone who's kind of stuck in that place of, you know, a teenager going through these things. I mean, you learned in that process that you don't have to go it alone. And that's, you write a lot about that, right? About, about don't, don't go it alone, be vulnerable, reach out to people. 
Absolutely. I tell people all the time that if you can learn to tell your story to yourself, so many times we have these ugly truths about ourselves, these secrets that we've learned to live with and we learn to function within our dysfunction. But mm. God came so that we can have things in decency and order so we don't have to be afraid of ourselves or afraid of our past. And I felt like it was so important that we begin to unify the things that have happened on the inside of us so that we can teach other people in our lives and communities to do the same. So I believe that starting with vulnerability, you know, as the Bible says his strength is made perfect in our weakness, that we show other people how to really have an incredible relationship with God. It's, it can be so hard, can it? I mean, you're a young pastor like I, and you, you are, um, you know, social media, all you see is the best. Yeah. And so it can be really hard to show somebody, I have this thing in my life, you know, addiction or a, a loss, or even something like I'm really struggling, like I got struggled with depression or, you know, prescription pain medication. I mean, there's a million things that people, that not, nobody puts that on Facebook, yeah. right? And, right. Isn't that a, a hard part? I mean, just there's a lot of social pressure, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that when we begin to believe that other people's highlight reel is their reality, that we begin to have even more shame within ourselves. Oh, and so, that's so good. sometimes you have to turn social media off, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's no other time that I feel like I need to be on a diet than when I'm on social media and I start seeing <laughs> all of these people. And then I realize I'm comparing myself. Yeah. And I have my own lane here on earth. We're each here with our own divine purpose and identity. And I don't don't have to become like my neighbor in order for me to be successful. So really vulnerability is also a lot to do with authenticity and being comfortable in your own skin. I think we always think that our vulnerability is going to push people away, but I've always found it draws people closer. And that's we don't we don't think that's going to happen, right? Absolutely. And I think at the end of the day, we want to have genuine connection with people. Yeah. And that comes from vulnerability. When we don't have vulnerability, we allow people to be connected to who we pretend to be, not who we actually are. Uh, say and that again one more time. <laughs> when we yeah. don't have vulnerability, we allow people to be connected to who we pretend to be, yeah. not who we really are. And so when life happens to us, we don't have anyone to reach out to because we've been pretending for all of this time that we've had it all together. And, and a lot of times people, especially in ministry and other places, can feel, even though you have lots of friends, you can feel lonely because you're like, well, they just see the pretend me. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's up to us to really demystify this illusions that our lives can often create. And that's why I can sit here and I can say, listen, this is what I've gone through. My life hasn't been perfect, you know, but God's glory and his grace has really shown through even my darkest days. And so I can sit up here and I can say, this is what I've gone through because I know that in a crowd this size, there are people who have their own issues and their own struggles. And maybe just maybe someone feels a little bit more comfortable because I got up here today. Absolutely. In fact, being vulnerable is one of the biggest things that gets you there, isn't it? Absolutely. We serve a real Jesus and a yeah. real Savior. So we have That's to be right. real when we come to his throne and as we go throughout this world. And in order for our destiny to be manifest, we have to be willing to get ourselves out of the way, be real about who we are, who we want to become, and what we believe God has for us. Don't settle for safe. That's the name of the book, and that is that is her uh, encouragement to you. And what a great encouragement it is. I want to make sure that if you're going through a tough time, it takes, my grandpa used to say, it takes guts to get out of the ruts. You know, when you're stuck in that place, this, I think this book can really help you a lot. Don't settle for safe. And uh, you can find out more at sarahjakesroberts.com. And it comes out April 18th. And uh, we're going to really be looking forward to that, Pastor Sarah. Thank you so thank much for you. being here. Let's give her a hand and thank you. What an awesome word. We love and appreciate you so much.
working on a building, I'm working on a building, hallelujah. Working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building, it's a Holy Ghost building. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that you're with us. If you live in the L.A. or Orange County area, come down to Shepherd's Grove. We're not far from Disneyland. You can take your kids to Disneyland afterwards. I might even go with you. So just come down here. We'll give you a big old hug, and we want you to know that God loves you just as you are, not as you should be. So let's hold your hands out like this, and we're going to say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. At Shepherd's Grove, an hour of power with Bobby Schuler. we believe that every person deserves dignity because every person is loved by God. We also believe that when people feel God's love personally, they are compelled to live as happy and whole students of Jesus. Your generous support is essential to our ministry and ensures we continue to share the life-changing message of God's love with the world. Today, we ask that you prayerfully consider partnering with us as we do ministry together. By becoming a Sparrow Partner, your contribution of $20 a month or one-time gift of $240 will help us continue to bring the message of God's love to a hurting world. As a thank you, we will send you this Sparrow Accent Lamp, perfect for a desk or a side table. We hope it reminds you of how much we appreciate you and rely on your partnership. In addition, we'll include this inspirational postcard from Pastor Bobby, who in his own words talks of the sparrow and how it's been a symbol of hope and faith in this ministry's history. Your steadfast support enables Hour of Power with Bobby Schuler to maintain and extend its reach around the world. Call, write, or go online to become a Sparrow Partner today. Thank you, and remember always, God loves you, and so do we. Hi friends, here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we're passionate about sharing God's love and dignity with the people in our community, both here in Orange County and throughout the world. And we consider you a valuable part of that community. Today, I hope you'll consider joining our mailing list so we can better encourage and connect with you. We love you and we're rooting for you. To join our mailing list, please call, write, or go online today. To thank you for joining, we'll send a special bookmark featuring the Creed of the Beloved. We hope it reminds you of how much we love and appreciate having you as part of our community. Please call, write, or go online today. And now, let's return to the service for Bobby's message. Be at peace with the truth. Be at peace with the fact that you can't save the whole world. 
but you can save a couple. Be at peace that you can't take a hold of every single opportunity that comes your way. Be at peace with your imperfections. Be at peace with your limitations. Be at peace with the fact that you're not where you want to be yet. Uh, Today we're going to talk about living every day at peace and not having to lie, deceive, hide, or pretend in order to show a better version of ourselves. Today we're going to talk about not lying. You don't need to lie. You don't need to exaggerate. You don't need to hide. Because uh, God's going to get you where you need to go, but he loves you just as you are. Look, there's nothing worse as an adult than getting caught in a lie. I know you don't lie, and you've never fibbed or anything, or even worse, gotten caught in it. But some of us have. I remember when I was a kid, one of the first times this happened to me where I had to carry the heavy burden of a, not a lie, but something that was deceptive. I, I went to Ambule. It was in San Juan Capistrano. And they had this system where they would give you like these little golden tickets. They were awesome. They were called golden eagles. And if you collected 10 of them, you'd become an honor student. And they would have you in front of the school and your parents would get a bumper sticker, and they would say, my son, or daughter, but son in this case, is a honor student at Anvil Public School. And, uh, and then they wouldn't want to put it on their car because they would think they're bragging, and you'd say, you have to, I worked so hard for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to get one of these honor student things, and so I started collecting these little golden eagles, you know? And if you got 10, you got the full kit and caboodle. So I was at like, Seven, you know, I was, I was picking up trash after school. I was saying compliments to, you know, kids I didn't like. I was doing all sorts of nice things, going an extra mile, especially if a teacher was watching, putting my best foot forward. I was so close. Then one day, I decided to make a rock-throwing shooting range against a wall. And I was, it was so good. I was throwing rocks against this wall. I was throwing fast. I was throwing hard. And some silly teacher decided to walk into my throwing range. <laughs> and uh, which I thought, to, still to this day, can't you see? What are you doing? So I didn't see her. I was a bit of a nutty professor even back then. And I'm throwing these rocks against the wall. And thank God, I didn't hit the poor lady, but I almost did. And that was enough for her to be very angry. And she gave me a demerit. I know, it's very sad. Demerit means you lose three golden eagles, effectively bumping me down to like four after all this progress. And the worst thing about the demerit is you had to get it signed by one of your parents. Now, I grew up in a divorced family, and there are some really ne- you know, negative things about it, but there's some positive things about having divorced parents too. <laughs> one is <laughs> you get extra Christmas and birthday presents, double in fact. But the other, you know, when you're a kid, you sometimes feel like maybe your parents are playing you against each other. I don't know if my parents did that. I certainly felt that way sometimes. But then you learn to kind of turn it around. You learn to use that to your advantage. And uh, both of my parents were very cool, very, very sweet, good parents. But I would say my dad was slightly stricter of the two of them. You know, he really worked hard with me in school, and we would always do math problems together, and he was, he was really a great coach. But I was also a lot more scared of what my dad would think about this demerit than my mom. So I got my mom to sign the demerit. (laughs) And I thought, you know, I am going to hide this from my dad. And I remember for for days, carrying around, I didn't technically lie or anything, but carrying this burden around of, uh, you know, having a demerit and, uh, you know, hiding it from my dad. Well, what I didn't know is they mail it back to your house I come in one day, and I've been carrying this around for days, you know, just like, what if he finds out? What's he going to do to me? I walk in, and there is my dad, holding the Ambule Public School demerit. Now, my plan, of course, I was just going to get 13 and say I got 10, and then make it even out. Didn't work. So when I talk, so my dad, he goes, what? I don't even care. It's not a big deal. I threw rocks all the time when I was a kid. Who cares? 
And I thought, oh my goodness, oh thank goodness I'm you know, through this. And, but it ended up not being a big deal, right? And what I want to say this morning is that getting caught in a lie, especially when it's hiding something, is so much worse than just coming out with whatever it is that you're hiding. And as children, we're supposed to sort of learn that. You know, we're supposed to learn that. But as one uh, church girl said, uh, a lie is an abomination to God and a very present help in a time of trouble. <laughs> and that's the other thing we learn when we're kids, you know? That <laughs> so as we become adults, we sort of learn to not necessarily lie, but not tell the whole truth or exaggerate or hide things in order to put our best foot forward to others. And I just want to say that if you hear anything I say this morning, hear this. The truth, even when, you know, even if it's raw and not well done and tactless, the truth is always better in the long run. I want to say to you this morning that we all sort of think our identity needs to be supplemented. We have this temptation that as we compare ourselves, we were talking to Sarah about this earlier today, compare ourselves to the the wide array of intelligent, successful, beautiful, young people out there, people that are farther along than we are, have done more than we have done. There's a strong temptation to supplement our identity. You don't have to do that. I had a very, very good friend, and she always put her best foot forward for me because I was a pastor. And one time I caught her smoking. And she said, oh, now you know I smoke. I said, I always knew you smoked, I don't care. And she said, I know, I just didn't want you to know, you know. And, and yet at the same time, I, I, really, I really, in a way, loved that about that she said that. I thought it was just such a sweet thing to say to me. But the irony is that so often we want people to be closer to us by hiding the things we don't like about ourselves. And you don't need to do that. You're, you're lovable just the way you are. You're, you're doing so great. You don't need to beat yourself up. I'm so proud of you. And uh, so you don't need to hide. You don't need to lie. And uh, sometimes we lie because we want to get there faster. We want to break the rules. We, we, we need to catch up with the rest of the world. So, so we cheat. And sometimes we lie because we're just compulsive in our behavior. We all have that friend, don't we? That guy or that gal that lies even when they don't need to. I remember sitting in college, we had this friend who was so compulsive with this type of stuff. We're sitting around in college. A lot of the students are science students. And someone says, and they're like working on their homework. So giving him the wrong answer means he's going to like get it wrong on his test. And he's like, how far is the moon from the earth again? And this guy says, 25 miles. <laughs> The moon is like two, I think it's 287,000 miles from the earth. I don't know if that's right. So don't write that down here. I think it's something like that. It's not 25 miles. That's a, that I do know. And he kept fighting over it. No, it's 25 miles. Well, sometimes we do it because it becomes such, we feel safer being fake than we do being real. Today, friends, I want to encourage you to be at peace with the truth. Why do we lie? We lie because we're not at peace with the truth. We're not at peace with the fact that we're not where we want to be yet. We're not at peace with the fact that we haven't quit smoking. We're not, not at peace with the fact yet that we haven't sorted out all of our addictions or struggles. We're not at peace with the fact yet that we haven't tackled our anger issues or whatever it is. So we hide, we pretend. And that we shouldn't be vulnerable with everybody. you got to be vulnerable with the people who love you or you're always going to feel lonely. And you've got to be honest and you've got to shoot straight. You've got to be at peace with the truth. And when that happens, so much energy and life and joy is going to come into you, you'll thank me. Because even though it takes a lot of courage to shoot straight with people, to be honest in everything, it's so worth it in the long run. People will trust you more, and you'll get away with being overly honest. Trust me, I do it all the time. I say some of the dumbest things sometimes, but people just, they're okay with it. They're not okay with it, but 
they get over it. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaches us. I'm sorry, we'll put it back on the screen again. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it's God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. But simply let your yes be yes, and your no, no, Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Now, this whole idea of oaths, by the way, was a religious loophole. You know, in Jesus' day, it was like, you know, there was this one verse in the Bible that says you've got to keep the oaths you make to the Lord. And what happened is in Jesus' day, as religious traditions do, people came up with this idea, well, I only have to tell the truth when I swear. And then it was like, well, I only have to tell the truth when I swear an oath to the Lord. And so people, when they wanted to trick others, instead of swearing by the Lord, they would swear by something holy. I swear by, you know, Jerusalem. I swear by heaven. I swear on my head. And then when the person would say, you broke your oath, they would say, whoa, 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 what oath? It's not really an oath unless you swear, you know, by the Lord, but I swore by heaven. Sorry. It's like when you're a kid and you're like, I didn't shake on it. And then what people started doing and it, people still kind of do this today. Anytime somebody say, is trying to say something to you you don't believe and they keep saying, I swear, I swear, I swear, what they're saying is, my character is not good enough to carry what I'm saying, so I'm going to swear to augment it. <laughs> don't trust people that swear a lot. So the Quakers took this idea and they really, in a way, took it to extreme, but I, I kind of like it, I like extremes. And they, they decided, I'm not going to do oaths in court anymore because um, whether I, I'd rather be in contempt of court than in contempt of heaven. So I will always tell the truth as Quakers. So they do, wouldn't swear on the Bible because they always wanted their yes to be yes and their no to be no. And the other thing the Quakers did is, you may be surprised to learn this, they invented the price tag. Yay, Quakers. <laughs> it's not just oatmeal. <laughs> they invented the price tag too. And uh, back in the day, until the Quakers came around, you had to barter for everything. You never barter anymore. I mean, have you ever gone to like some exotic market somewhere, you know, in Mexico or a virus treaty, you go to like some distant land, you, you, you know, you go back and forth for a long time. I've only got a dollar. I, oh, but this cost me $15, but I have to pay for my dinner. And, you know, and this back and forth, so much drama. So much lying, and you guys are just vying over, like, how much am I going to pay for this ninja star? And so it ends up being, like, $2.40, and you walk away with your ninja star. And, uh, and that's how everything used to be, over a gallon of milk, over everything. And the Quaker said, enough of this. We're putting a price tag on stuff. Just tell us what it is. No more games. No more drama. Everybody say, thank you, Quakers. And what the Quakers believed and what Jesus was teaching was you just need to shoot straight. Just shoot straight with people. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Be you. Be you. When we are at peace with the truth, we are at peace with who we are, only then are we given the gift of the ability to make progress in our lives. So for Jesus, as he's teaching on this, he lives this out. Jesus speaks truth to power. Jesus speaks truth to his disciples. I want you to hear this. I need, you need you to hear this. I made a slide for it just so you would. There isn't anyone Jesus didn't disappoint. If you want to live a life like Jesus, you're going to disappoint people. And you're going to disappoint people a lot. Because you can't please the Lord and please people at the same time. People pleasing is not loving people. That's a big difference. And to do what God's called you to do means you're going to have to say no sometimes. No to things that are good. No to opportunities. No to things that are noble. No to things that are an honor to you. You have to say no in order to say yes to the highest calling sometimes. And that's really hard. Jesus was at peace with the truth himself. And that's why he was disappointing so many people. Because he knew what he was called to do. You know, Judas was a true believer. 
We often think Judas was out to get Jesus from the beginning. He wasn't. Jesus was one of, Judas was one of Jesus' most passionate disciples. But he wanted Jesus to be a military leader, not a pacifist. And I, a lot of people speculate that the reason Judas took the money is he thought that by the Pharisees going and arresting Jesus, Jesus would use his you know, divine superpowers and finally take up arms. But he didn't. He laid his life down. He, he lived out his sermon 100%. I think that's why Judas was so riddled with guilt. So Jesus disappointed everybody all the time. But he had to in order to do the best for them and the best for God. So, unfortunately... Being vulnerable about your imperfections, confessing your sins, saying no to things you don't have time or energy for, hurts. It's difficult. The truth hurts, but the truth will set you free. Shoot straight with people, and you do. And so much of it is this idea that people will pull away from us if we're honest with them, if we share with them our opinions or tell them that we need something from them. We'll push them away, but we won't. When you're vulnerable and honest with people, especially about your sins and your mistakes, you draw people to you. You draw people closer to you. It's hard to be around perfect people. And I've said this a lot. It's a lot easier to hang out with sinners than it is with saints. The truth hurts, but it will set you free. I think one of the number one reasons for Christians that we lie is because we don't want to hurt people. Either whatever mistake it is that you're carrying, you're like, man, if they know about this, they're really going to feel hurt about it. Or even more importantly, like, you just feel like a lot of pressure to do a lot. You feel like it's not the servant thing to do to tell my spouse or my parents or my kids that I have these needs. So I'm just going to bury them and hide them. You say, my opinion is negative, so if I share it, I'm being a negative person. That's not true. I can't be honest about the fact that I feel upset about this thing because that will hurt their feelings. Well, that's not true either. Well, maybe it'll hurt their feelings, but they'll live. They'll be okay. And especially, we struggle to say no because the thing we're being invited to is so good. But you can't do everything. You can't and still have the energy to do what God has called you to do. Too many of us Say yes when we don't have a yes to give. By the way, it's okay to have empty spaces in, in your life. So we need to become experts at saying no. See, a lot of us are fine at saying no. We're really good at saying no. but Or we, we say no a lot, but we're really bad at it, huh? A lot of us say no a lot, but we're really bad at saying no. We're really hurtful. We don't have any tact. We don't have compassion. you got to become good at saying no in a really sweet, loving way. And let me tell you, that is a skill. The more vulnerable you are in your, in your no, the more you're going to draw people closer to you. Your life is a bit like pigs eating at a trough. I don't know if you've ever been like at a farm, you see pigs weaving their way into the trough. There's all these pigs packed in, and as one pig squeezes in, another like just pops out. <laughs> it's very cute, actually. And that's what your life is like. As people come to you asking for things, needing things from you, other things get popped out. And if you're not controlling that, you're going to lose control. You're not going to be able to choose what pops out of your life. And so many of us, we're saying yes so often, we don't have time for naps. If you don't have time for naps, you're saying yes too much. Taking naps is a very Christian thing to do. <laughs> Jesus is like napping all the time. The guy took a nap on a boat in a storm. <laughs> and they were mad at him. They were like, are you crazy? You're on a boat in a storm, and we're going to drown. None of us can swim, and you're napping. <laughs> there he is, disappointing people again with his nap. <laughs> in all truth, though, we need big gaps in our life of rest. If you don't have time to relax, to nap, to have fun, where are you going to hear? That is the place where God speaks most to us, is in our time of rest. Rest is the birthplace of vision. It's when we step back from life that we're able to analyze it and get a new idea, a fresh perspective, a positive idea. 
Tired eyes can't see a bright future. We have to become the kind of people who are not packing our lives full of things all the time because we're so afraid of hurting people's feelings. So become an expert at saying no. Get good at it. So that when you have a yes to give, it counts. And you're not exhausted. I remember Andy Stanley and his wife Sandra Stanley, they started a church in Atlanta. It's one of the biggest, it's probably the biggest church in America. And as a pastor's wife, she was under immense pressure to say yes to everything. And by the way, things she wanted to do. Things that were good. You know, speaking at a women's conference and, and going to all these events. But she felt like God had called her to be a mom first and to be a great mom. And so there was this battle within her, like, I have to keep disappointing all these people by saying no. So she wrote down, she was reading uh, Nehemiah. And in the story of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is on the wall and he's building. And all these people keep asking him to come down. At one point, they ask him four times in a row, come down. And every time Nehemiah says the same thing, he says, I am doing a good work and I cannot come down. I am doing a good work and I cannot come down. I am doing a good work. I cannot come down. And so she would write these on post-it notes and put it like by her phone and on her bed. And every time she was feeling guilty or shame that the fact that she said no so much, she would say, I'm doing a good work. I cannot come down. I have to put my children first. And if God's called you to do something, you have to be okay with the fact that you have to say no to great opportunities. And sometimes you have to say no to people you love. Man, I've had to learn that. I have to say no all the time to my closest friends. I've got a you know, big ministry and a special needs kid and a wife to love. That takes a lot of time. But you know, we, get, we worry so much about hurting people's feelings, but I can tell you, they'll live. They'll be okay. Just shoot straight with them. Just shoot straight with them. I, just tell them. Tell them what you're feeling. You think it's gonna push them away? It's gonna draw them closer. It's gonna draw them closer. I believe extreme vulnerability brings extreme freedom and joy. Being truly you, being at peace with the truth of your imperfections, with who you are and what you're struggling with, is gonna make you a freer, more joyful, more alive person. You're gonna feel so alive the more vulnerable you are, even about your sins, your mistakes, and your flaws. Many of us were asked about something in our lives, you know, and we're tempted to exaggerate. You're on a date with some girl and you know, I, I think I lied to Hannah the first time I met her about how much I could bench press because I didn't know. <laughs> how much do you bench press? I, I was like, my weight. I bench press my weight because I, I knew that was good, but I didn't, I didn't even know how much I weighed at the time. It was a big mess. <laughs> I did enroll into a weightlifting class later. But you find yourself in these situations. I want to teach you the 10-second rule. 10-second rule says this. You have 10 seconds to fix a lie with no drama. <laughs> 10 seconds. The second you say something, the clock starts ticking. <laughs> so somebody invites you to something at night. Hey, go see it. let's go see a movie tonight. It's going to be so fun. And, and you really don't want to go. You don't have anything going on, but you just need some time to yourself. And you say, I've got a doctor's appointment. <laughs> it's like at 11 in the morning, but you've got a doctor's appointment or whatever. You've got 10 seconds. The clock is ticking. Are you going to fix it or not? And then in that 10 second period, you have enough time to circle back and say, actually, I don't have a doctor's appointment, but I was really, I just need some time to myself tonight. I hope you understand. I was looking forward to some popcorn and Netflix, and I just want it tonight to myself. Is that all right? And let me tell you, people are gonna appreciate that, that you're not like making something up, that you're just honest with them. And if your friend keeps pressing you, just keep, hold your ground. They're going to live. They'll be fine. Hang out with them some other time. Tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. Tell them you want to see them. Just not tonight. <laughs> tonight it's Netflix. Oh, my, myself. So for all you introverts out there, and I'm not one, just shoot straight with people. And more importantly, shoot straight with people about what's going on on the inside. I know life is hard. I know you have been through a lot. And when we go through spiritual, theological disappointments and confusions, when we go through hardship, 
go through loss, sickness, or angry about something, we so often are so tempted to push it down and to think that we have to walk alone on that thing because we don't want to push others away or hurt people or be a burden to others. You don't have to go it alone. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. If being vulnerable pushes your friends away, they're not your friends. If being vulnerable means that people are distant from you, they were never close to you in the first place. And you'll realize that when you become vulnerable. You'll see that in that time, that's what friends and family are for, is to help each other with their burdens. You've done that for others. Let others do it for you. So often in life, being vulnerable about your past, some of us are hiding something we're really ashamed of, something we did in our past, or some of you are hiding stuff that was done to you that you're ashamed of. Maybe you were abused as a child. You don't have to hide that. That was not your fault. And you don't have to carry that alone. And you certainly don't have to be embarrassed by it. In all the things that we go through in life, don't go it alone. Be vulnerable and be at peace with the truth. And in your vulnerability and in your courage, because it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable about these things, God's going to carry you through. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. And God is proud of you too. You say, God's not proud of me. I want you to know he is. God sees all the stuff in your life. And that's what grace is about. God loves you just as you are and not as you should be. And I want you to know that I believe in you and God believes in you. And you're never too far gone to, to get back on the right path and to fulfill your destiny. But the only way that happens is when we have courage, when we're vulnerable, when we start shooting straight with people, when we stop hiding, we stop feeling like you gotta carry things alone. You don't have to go it alone. I'm here for you, this church is here for you, and God is there for you. The more honest we are, the more freedom and energy we have in life. You are loved, and you're doing better than you think, and be you, just as you are, not as you should be. And you'll get one step closer to where you want to be. That's a promise. Truth is always better in the long run. And it hurts, but it'll set you free. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We love you. Lord, we carry so many burdens. We don't have to. And we ask that in Jesus' name, these heavy weights would become like balloons. We would just let them go into the sky. And Lord, you would hold us and carry us, forgive us, renew us, give us the courage to be honest with people. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The preceding program was paid for by the friends and ministry partners of the Hour of Power.